Hello, my name is Todd Bussey. I am the manager of DevOps enablement at Cox Automotive. Uh, I was invited here today to speak to you a little bit about uh, Cox Automotive's uh, journey with Capato uh, in our Salesforce space. Just to give you a little bit of background about myself, I've been with Cox Automotive for 17 years, having started out in dealer support on the phones talking with our dealers and then eventually making my way into IT. I have approximately 15 years in the IT space. The first 12 years of that was in the custom code environment, uh, first working with Java and .NET, and I was pulled into the Salesforce ecosystem approximately three, three and a half years ago uh, to begin Cox Auto's journey uh, into DevOps in the Salesforce space. To get a little bit of background on uh, Cox and Salesforce, the Cox Automotive Salesforce space kind of grew through acquisition. Uh, as the company has grown larger and new business units were integrated, they often came with their own Salesforce instances and we simply rolled the organization and the development teams into the larger Salesforce space uh, and, and building out our enterprise Salesforce team. There are five core Salesforce orgs that are supporting the various business units. Each of the Salesforce orgs has two scrum teams uh, working on it. One represents our sales customers and the other represents our service business partners. Uh, and each of those scrum teams is, is broken up into about eight developers with a, with a reasonable split between both Salesforce admins and Salesforce developers. Starting in, in 2018, 2019, there was a decision that we wanted to bring more rigor to our Salesforce space. We began to move away from clicks, not code, and began doing more custom code within our Salesforce organizations. At that time, there was some low confidence around our Salesforce space and the code that was currently in our production orgs. There was no single source of truth. There's the work that the development teams knew that they had done. There's the development work that business partners thought had been done. And then there's fixes that the production support team knew that they had done and they didn't always match. And there was no single source of truth. The production org and what was in it was the source of truth, even if we didn't know how something had gotten in there. Um, due to Salesforce refreshes and the attempt to keep the pipeline sandboxes as fresh as possible, we would lose development downtime. We would have development downtime every month when refreshes were done because integrations would have to be reestablished. And on some of our larger orgs that have very high integration, it would take quite a bit of time to go through and get everything wired back in. Uh, this led us to having very low trust with our business partners, and it slowed us down. We were releasing code every two weeks. Some of the challenges that, that we were facing is the fact that each of the Salesforce organizations had their own processes for deploying code. One team would still be using chain sets. Other teams would be using a combination of chain sets and Capato. And some teams would be using solely Capato to move their, uh, move their code. And just to be clear, Capato had already been brought in before I started uh, with Cox Automotive in the Salesforce space. Uh, there had been a previous attempt with uh, AutoRabbit that had not gone as well as had been hoped. And the decision was made to bring, uh, bring Capato in as the deployment tool. But one of the issues we had due to the lack of centralization, there was nobody driving out the use of Capato. It was very optional for every team and they could use it or not at their own discretion. Uh, one of the additional problems that we had is that scrum teams that were working on the same orgs had separate processes. One team might be using change sets, the other might be using uh, using Capato, uh, and there was insufficient communication and overwrites were common uh, across all of our orgs. Uh, as I said before, the production org was the source of truth. Um, with change sets, we had changes being made directly in production uh, because not everyone was using Capato. Not all of our changes were recorded in GitHub. 
And that led to confusion on why changes had been made and often when changes had been made. Um, each org had their own version of a development pipeline that in some cases had five to six sand sandboxes and some teams just had three. Uh, and again, because we tried to keep the sandboxes up to date, uh, we would lose development time every, uh, every month doing the refreshes. So these were some of the challenges that we were facing. And the decision was made uh, with management buy-in that Capato would be the only tool um, that could be used for moving code. This was the beginning of our simplification journey. There was, at this point, going forward, only one way to do things. Uh, Capato had been available to all the teams, but it was optional. And now it became the only tool. And one of the reasons that we wanted to do that is if everybody's using the same tool, then they're gonna start trending in the same directions. We then began to standardize all of our pipelines for our, all of our organizations. All work had to start in the dev sandbox and then move to the QA sandbox, finally to the pre-prod UAT sandbox before going to production. And all of the changes had to be deployed up the pipeline. Uh, we restricted it so that no direct production changes were allowed. Uh, we further restricted it as we, uh, as we got further into our journey when we found that developers, while they were moving their stories up from dev, they would go in and manually make changes in the QA environment and the pre-prod environment that then weren't, uh, that would then get overwritten because nobody knew that change was made. So we did add a additional restriction so that code could only be committed in the dev environment. You can make the change in one of the lower environments, but you can't move it any further than exactly where you made the change. So this is how we began to simplify things uh, across all our orgs. We made Capato the only tool for moving code. Once we had buy-in from management and from the development teams that Capato was going to be the only tool allowed for moving code, it allowed us to begin standardizing our processes across all of the orgs. The first change that was put in place was that all stories, no matter how small or how complex, had to be moved with a Capato user story. And the reason for doing that is that it puts all of your changes into Git. And it gives you traceability when a change was made in dev, up through each environment, and into production. The next process that we began to standardize was for any story with Apex code or lightning changes, in order to be promoted out of dev, there had to be a pull request done, which we enforced using connection behavior in Capato. And what this does is it again, keeps get as the source of truth. The pull request, while initiated in Compato, is kicked off and done in get. And the reviewer has to record their comments and make their approval in get so you have a record that the code was actually looked at. A lot of the teams have been doing over the shoulder review or had simply uh, emailed the code change that they had made and had it reviewed this way. This gave us traceability of how the request was done, who did it, and when. One of the most important things for us was adding version control. Uh, we now put a version tag in Git for every production release. And every it's an automatic behavior uh, that we use through Capato. For every production promotion, it automatically increments the version within GitHub. And so we're able to see every time a release is made and how the code has changed. Uh, additionally, we're kicking, up, kicking off a change request to ServiceNow, which is our change management system. Uh, we use a URL callout to automatically open a change request and upon successful completion of the deployment, close the uh, change request, which that integrates us with our enterprise change management uh, so that they're aware every time that we're making a change on any of the, uh, the Salesforce orgs. One of the really big benefits that we got using Capato was the ability to back promote 
instead of using sandbox refreshes. As I've said before, our teams would lose development time every time a refresh was required because they would have to reestablish the integrations, which cost a lot of time. Now we automatically kick off a back promote when something is moved up the pipeline or into production, and it automatically gets promoted back down. And the big win there is that our developers are now always working against the most current code because the difficulties with refreshes, sometimes they were not done when they should be. So we additionally ran into teams working against really outdated code uh, because they, they didn't want to give up the time that was required for a refresh. One of the big gains about creating the standard processes across all of our Salesforce orgs is that it really began to unify the teams. Developers, can now be moved between teams without having to learn new processes. It's very clear cut that you will move your code up the pipeline in a specific manner with specific safety gates enforced. And this has also over time allowed us to continue to roll out uh, new control behaviors, new uh, connection behaviors. Uh, we were able to roll out the uh, PMD static code analysis to look at the code quality of user stories as they come out of dev into our uh, QA environments. This has also reduced the number of production issues we have and it simplifies resolution. Uh, we have significantly reduced the occurrence of overwrites in productions um, and all of our changes are traceable through Git. And we have confidence that what is in production is what should be in production because Git is the source of truth. So what's the payoff been for Cox Automotive in their Capato DevOps Salesforce journey? Our deployments are fast and frequent and no longer hours long. We no longer wait until the end of each sprint before deploying all of our changes. We deploy on demand. When a user story is complete and tested and ready to go, it's pushed into production. We're better able to address business needs. The standard processes allow us to reallocate capacity to meet business demand. We can move developers between one org and the next and have them up and running very quickly. There's confidence from our business partners, from our developers, from our management, that what is in production should be in production. And by adding in pull requests and static code, we know we've improved the code quality. So 2018, 2019, we had low confidence. We didn't have a single source of truth. We had dev downtime every month for refreshes. We had low trust from business partners and we were only releasing every two weeks. As we begin to approach the end of 2022, we have 40 releases per month. 60 users delivered each month across five orgs. Most importantly, we have a high level of confidence from our business partners, from our developers, from our management, that we've done what we were supposed to do and that the right code is there. We deploy on demand. When a user story is ready, we push it through the pipeline and into production. And there is only one single source of truth. If the code is in Git, it's supposed to be there. If it's not in Git, it's not supposed to be there. It can be remedied and off we go. This is the Cox Automotive Capato DevOps Salesforce journey. Thank you for your time.